green and red are not as different as copper and aluminium because green and red are just two different wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. So basically you can get from one to the other by turning a knob. Green and red suggest things to us. What they suggest, I would argue, might be more profoundly different than what copper and aluminium suggest to us. Well, copper and aluminium are two materials with different microscopic arrangements of their atoms and completely different properties. For example, if I cool them down to very low temperatures, I'll find that one of them is just a normal metal and the other is a superconductor, which is a very exotic a state of matter radically different from a normal metal. I'm not really a metals person. I find myself quite often repelled by metals. Some people might argue that we're almost hardwired into responding to red in a particular way and green in another way. Red has different connotations in different cultures. So um, it can be the passionate colour, it can be a celebratory colour, it can also be a warning colour. It comes down to intuition, what it is that kind of sparks you off is deeply inside you. I completely appreciate that colour has a, a sort of a value and a, a meaning. For me, the materiality is more profound, actually, than colour, even though Turner did a great thing with colour. I can visualise beautiful things coming out of rectangular objects because they were placed properly and ordered properly and, and cut properly. If I had a different understanding of the properties of different materials, I might be looking at that exhibition very differently and, and thinking, therefore, I would perhaps be reading the placement of those two different materials alongside each other in a completely different way with a very different resonance. Periodic elements are separated in step changes, whereas colours advance over a gradual and shifting range through the spectrum. If you're going to really look at this as, as, a, as a palette, as one metal being profoundly different from another, then actually visually you're only getting part of the clue. And one of the things that I think you know, would be immediate and that everybody could get would be to take your shoes and socks off and walk over these things because they would feel different. My reason for not wanting to walk on it was kind of maybe being a bit too reverential and, you know, it, this is a, a, an artist's work. It is through that sensuality of touch that the, that the human being can tangibly feel and, and understand how something functions. Turner didn't start out as an artist, but started as an architect. If you look at some of Turner's great works, like his painting of uh, Salisbury Cathedral, which is not in colour, but which is in lots of tones of grey, because he's really looking at the materials. This is doing in a, two, in a 2D, in a painterly way, the same sort of thing that André is doing uh, in a sculptural way. This man, the material spoke to him. He visited Stonehenge when he was 19, and that was a really important moment for him and talked about the scale and the kind of bulk of those stones. I actually found myself sneaking around some of the pieces and, and standing close to it and really feeling it and experiencing the vibrations intuitively. I went in the room and it wasn't the materials that struck me, it was the geometry. Well, each of them are big statements, so they need space around them for us to be able to relate to them. My relationship with that piece of artwork is my personal relationship with what I see in front of me and how that makes me feel. Not what anyone else is telling me that I should feel, not what someone else has felt in the past, not what an academic with a scientific background tells me comes out of the piece or goes into the makeup of the piece, but only what I am seeing and feeling about it at that particular moment.